on this little piece. Now the first thing, yeah, she'll be here and then we'll, we, she can post her link. Remind her to post her link for the alcohol wipes. Um, first thing I'm going to do really quick though is freshen up my canvas. So my canvas is pre-primed. All the ones that you get from Dick Blick and Michaels are pre-primed. But we're going to clean it up anyway. So I'm just going to use white acrylic paints. Thank you, Donna. I like hanging out with y'all on Wednesdays too. Hey, G. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to my canvas. And then we'll dry it real quick with our little dryer. So I just wiped off a sticky spot, um, Gina, with the uh, wipes. So I thought if you wanted to gear or lead people towards your Facebook page for the uh, mixed media alcohol wipes. They're great for cleaning up resin and uh, wiping stuff off your tools. So you can post your link there. Thank you, Sue. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of white paint just to make sure that we have a nice, clean, fresh background to start. And of course, as per usual, I got a little too much. Hey, Darlene. Hey, Charlene. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead, since I have a little too much, I'm gonna go ahead and add some to the sides so we don't waste this paint that I got a little excessive. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, ladies. Hey, Bonnie from Chicago. You're welcome, G. So we're just clean that up and make sure we're starting with a really fresh, fresh canvas. Hey, Jill. Hey, Maria. Melanie, how are you ladies? So I'm real quick gonna just blow dry this with my, um, heat gun and get that dry so we can get started on our art piece. I've just been working. What you been doing? Hey, Lou. Get, go get you some Jesus. Hey, Melody. My hands are cold too, so I'm going to like put my hands under here, warm them up. Thank you, Shannon, for the stars. And thank you guys for, um, spreading the love and letting people know that we're here live and that we um, are making some pretty artwork. So I'm just gonna, I know they're gonna be so cute, aren't they? I'm just gonna get this dry. I have to get it dry so I can transfer my image. I, I could have painted this beforehand, but I was literally down to the wire when uh, it was when my buzzer went off and said it was five minutes till. Thank you, Cloma. I don't know why I added that pin post to the thing. I need to figure that out. I don't like it. When using paper and canvas, go put Mod Podge on the bottom and the top. Yes, ma'am. You want to glue it to your canvas using the Mod Podge. Hey, Catherine. And then let it dry. Or you're going to put it on the top as well, then let it dry, and then put another coat of Mod Podge just for security. I think we're done. I think we're done. She is getting better. It's a slow go. It's still sticky there. It is a slow process. She has long haulers and from COVID, and so uh, she's on the struggle bus, but she is getting a little better every day. So that's a good thing. So here is our cute little gnome. Here's our cute little gnome and I'm going to put a bee on mine. So I'm going to cheat it over to the left a little bit. So I'm going to have a struggle getting uh, this to stay straight, but I'm going to do my very best and like tape it down to the side. And I want his, the bottom of his beard and the beehive to line up. And my bee is kind of hanging off. 
but I'm going to use this B anyway. And so, and I'll probably just turn him where he fits and do that maybe a little differently. So we're going to work with this little canvas. Isn't he cute? I love gnomes too. So I was going to do a St. Patty's Day gnome, but I decided on this one. And I could not stop myself because those little bees are just too stinking adorable. So we're going to do our little gnome hat in black and white stripes. And we're going to give him antenna just like a bee. And then we're going to add our little glass bees. But for those of you that are in the shattered circle, the tracer obviously does contain a drawn on B. I'm just gonna add those later. I don't wanna have to paint over them. The tracer will contain this drawn on B for your convenience, just in case you don't have any of the B's from the link I gave you. Let me get his nose. And I'm gonna do the beehive, but I'm gonna skip the bee, obviously, and I'm gonna skip the little buzz trail because I think I might just do it in dots. And I need to move it a little so it's not going off my page. Okay, so what I like to do before uh, to untape it is to take a peek, make sure everything is on there the way I want it. So I left off the antenna, because I'm just gonna draw those on freehand, and I left off the bee and the bee trail, because I'm gonna do something a little different, so we can get started. We can get this party started. So, let me get this paint off of here. So the colors that I'm using, this is super cool, because they're only, thank you, Laura, for the stars, there are only three colors. So we're gonna, besides the white, the white is four. So we're gonna use the white. We're gonna use marigold. We're gonna use black and obviously the white. So there's three colors. And, oh, we need a gray for his beard. Hang on, let's find us a gray. Let's do medium gray. We'll use this one. This is slate gray, because we want to have some gray in his beard. He's not a young bee. He's a little bit of an older bee. So I'm gonna pour some of this on my canvas and we are gonna get moving. Oops, so here's some yellow. Broke the top off. A little bit of gray. Hey, Linda. A little bit of gray. A little bit of black. Yes, the bees from Etsy. And we'll probably get grab another color for um, highlighting the beehive, but for now we're gonna use start with what we got. Okay, so on the tracer, I know you can't really see it from here, but on the tracer I drew little pencil lines that are um, indicative of where the stripes are gonna be. So I'm gonna start with that. And I'm actually just gonna kind of free paint those in. If I can find me a little brush. And I think I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do his hat, the, bit, the bill of his hat in black. So then we'll do that next line yellow. So we're gonna start with the black and we'll do that part of his cute little hat in the black. So we're just gonna make little bee strops. Oh wait, that was just a random question, Felicia. Didn't really have anything to do with what we're doing. Yeah, the fingernails are terrible. They are outgrown and I gotta go get me a mani and get these things off, the gel or whatever, the dip. Okay, so we're gonna paint in our black. We're gonna get his hat uh, out of the way because it's a... Uh,
try that. Can you hear me now? 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 Hang on. Let me do something real quick. My phone's on low battery mode again, and every time it hits low battery mode, for some reason, can you hear me? <laughs> okay. For some reason, it takes the sound away. I guess it thinks it has, uh, that helps. But anyway, I'm gonna real quick take my little pencil and help myself with these little stripes. Just give myself a little bit of a cheat sheet. Black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, there. <laughs> awesome, sound is back. Yeah, I think it's because my battery was low and um, for some reason my phone wants to cut battery when we're low or cut volume. It's happened a couple of times. So we're just gonna do our black stripes. And you notice, I don't know if you guys noticed, but my dude, my little gnome fella, has no hands and no feet. His beard is covering his feet and hands. So it's my first feet and handless gnome. But we're going with it. The last gnome that I did, his beard and hands ended or feet ended up wonky. So I thought, uh, I'm gonna make a bigger beard and we are gonna figure it out. She doesn't have any right now, Irene. She's sold out, so that's kind of irrelevant. But there, I think as much as I'd like for you to wait for her, I don't know even if she's gonna have any more. So um, there are other sellers that do glass bees. So you might want to check those out. I'm not, I don't know who they are, but I've seen them. And uh, we'll keep that uh, member site safe in our membership. So yeah, the bees you can find on Etsy. So I'm just filling in the black. My hands are really arthritis-y today. They're kind of shaky and um, not wanting to cooperate. They're also cold. That doesn't help. So they're being a pain in the rear today. Yes, those will definitely work, Irene. Big time. You're going to pour resin over the top of them anyway. So, no biggie. This hat's giving me fits. Ooh. Hang on. Some glass ones. All right, so that the black covered really nicely. May have one or two little skippies I can fill in real quick right here but it filled in really nicely. I don't think that's gonna need a second coat. So I'm gonna rinse that. Uh, I don't, Felicia, I don't even, I have one that someone gifted me and I've used it maybe a handful of times. So um, no, I think by the time you get it out and it's kind of messy, by the time you get it out and plug it in and start grinding, you could have had half the ones done by hand by then. So, I don't know. I don't know if it would be worth it or not. I hardly ever use the one I have. Hardly ever. So, yeah, the yellow is, let me try, hang on. If I see oil in it, so I probably didn't shake it up good. So I'm gonna add a little more. Oh, 
not, it definitely needed shaking. Hang on. Was that the same color? Yeah, marigold, marigold. So the yellow may need more than one coat. Yeah, make sure you shake your paints because, you know, when you squirt them out on your palette and then they're like uh, completely oil. This is, this doesn't have a size, but it's very small. Let me see if there's another one. It is a number four. It's called Marigold, this color. So, we're gonna fill in those yellow stripes. Super cute. <laughs> I probably should have, Kim, I probably should have, because, you know, that would have been the smart thing to do, but I just grabbed the first bottle of paint that was close to me, and that's how it went. So, I don't always do things in the right order. I'm a little crazy sometimes. There's oil. So yeah, totally do it your way. Oh, like I said, my, when it's cold, my arthritis is way worse than, um, normal. It's bad all the time, but it's worse in the winter. So my hands are kind of shaky. So the membership opens in March. It is an art membership where we go into great detail about glass art. We have a minimum of two full-blown tutorials every month inside our membership. Start to finish, supply list, tracers, everything you need for uh, doing two projects um, a month, a minimum of two projects a month, I should say. Um, and ooh, we do contests, we have Q&As, there are a plethora of videos we teach you how to, not only how to just do the workshops monthly, but we also teach you uh, how to break glass, break all kinds of glass, whether it's a vase or a bottle or sheet glass. We teach you how to cut glass. We teach you how to tint glass. We teach you how to use the resin. We teach you how to tint the resin. We teach you how to add hangers to your canvas. We teach you how to sell on Facebook. We teach you everything. And if you go to the shatteredcircle.com, you will, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the beehive as well. If you go to the shatteredcircle.com, you will see a listing of everything that is available and everything we offer in our membership. So it opens, I'm gonna ignore my lines. It opens again in March, right after we finish our little challenge that we're doing in March. So we'd love to have you guys join. When you join, you get instant access to uh, the videos that are in, um, that are past videos up through Gosh, we just talked about this last night, and I can't remember. I think October of 2020. So you have instant access to a year and a half of art, art videos. And once you've been in our group for six months, you get the vault, which has another almost two years of membership. Workshops, two a month minimum. So it's really fun. It's a very, it's, I'm going to let the people here 
who are members tell you all about how wonderful the community of women and man <laughs> are that are in our group because it is like a family. Uh, it is like a family. So, I'm going to get, I see I knew I was missing colors. I need that peach color for his little nose. Hang on. Probably a droplet of red. All right, so we have um, warm beige for. Mm, I think they uh, sold them, Laura, in. Um, I think there were like five or six in a pack. I can't. See, that one's greasy too. I didn't shake it. Uh, I don't remember exactly, so don't hold me to that, but they were several. Y'all are so sweet. So sweet. So I'm going to get his nose done real quick, and I'm going to do that. Yes, you do get those as well, Diana. So I'm going to just fill in his nose with this warm beige. Try not to get my hand in the beehive. What's it called, a bee's keep? Is that what it's called? I don't know why I'm having a issue remembering that. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for just a few minutes because it needs a second coat. Uh, Terry, if you are in the Shattered Circle, yes, you can. Thank you for the stars, Donna. Thank you, thank you. So while that's drying, I'm gonna put some more white on his beard and then I'm going to add some gray to that. Felicia says she saw bees at Hobby Lobby in the floral department. Now these that I'm using are made glass. So those are probably not, but you know, it doesn't have to be made glass. They could be, a, you could paint them. They could be a sticker. However you can get them on. So I'm gonna add I want to do it rather quickly though. So I may do one side at a time because I do want it to the gray to blend in. I don't want it to be a layer of gray over a dry layer of, look what I did. I messed it up. I can fix it, don't fret. I don't want the white to dry before I can get my gray on. Watch me. I said, ooh, watch me. So while the white is nice and wet, so if you find that you're, when you're trying to shade something or make it dimensional, that your colors are really harsh, it could be because you're not working wet on wet. So I'll show you real quick. The left side of his beard is still wet with white. So I'm gonna dip in to that gray and kind of blend it into my brush a little. And I'm literally going to just kind of make him some beard strokes and what that does because the white is still wet it blends in and it, so you end up with the dark gray a medium tone gray a light gray so it's multi-dimensional and it doesn't look harsh so just dip in and add while your paint while your white paint is still wet. See how that works? So it really makes it multi-dimensional. I need, hang on, I messed up his little nosy, and we'll fix that again in a minute, but. All right, I'm gonna go back to my white, and we'll do this side, and we'll do the same thing. Then we'll work on the little bee. Is it a bee's keep? Somebody tell me. Is it called a bee's keep? I 
I've been calling it a beehive, which I guess is also accurate. Let me get that little yellow again. Doesn't matter, it's just cute. Thank you, Robin, for the stars. So make sure your white is still wet. We'll offload a little of that white. Blend the gray into your brush, and then just start blending it in to your white, still wet. Beehive, me too. Doesn't matter, I guess. Just kind of go back and forth in like a bearded direction so that it is um, kind of random and lots of color. All right. So I think we're good on beard. I'm gonna bring it all the way down to the end though. Got a little more white onto that since it was so dark. All right, we'll rinse that. Bees keep, that's what I thought. Is it skep or skeep? It's so cute. I know, I like the bubbly hat too. So I'm gonna go back into that warm beige and put a second coat on his cute little nose. Make sure it's nice and covered. And then while that is wet, I'm gonna go just get a, the tiniest, itsy bitsiest bit of red on my brush, blend it out a little bit, and then I'm gonna go across the top of his nose with that red right where it touches his hats. Now we're gonna get that red off the brush. Oh no, Terry! We're gonna get the red off the brush, then I'm gonna get a little bit of white on, do the same thing, blend it out. We're gonna to go to the bottom, and we're gonna add a teeny bit of white to the bottom of his nose, and that kinda of gives his nose dimension. Can you see that? Yeah, I was trying, I had to pull him close so I could get him, uh, get his nose done. But I'll try to be a, more attentive. So he is so cute. So now the bee, the bees keep needs, bee skep, bee skeep needs another layer. And it also needs um, something to give it dimension. So I'm going to grab a brown. I'm going to grab... This burnt umber, which is just a chocolatey brown. And I'm gonna add just the smallest dot to my canvas. And we're gonna go in and we are going to do like two of the lines. I don't like to do the whole thing. <laughs> I don't like to do the whole thing at once because I do want it to still be wet when we add our um, shadowing. Oh shoot, this brush, remind me to fix this brush while the uh, resin is wet. Cause this brush keeps falling apart and it is one of my faves. Okay, so I'm gonna, still with my icky brush, I'm gonna dip just barely a corner of that into my paintbrush. Then I'm gonna blend it out a little. And on the bottom of that first bee skeep line, <laughs> I'm just making up. I don't know why there's no sound. On the bottom, uh, while that's still wet, I'm gonna make a little bit of a line and I'm gonna kinda curve it around the edge about halfway. Then we'll do it again on that next little line right where it blips out and make it come around that line about halfway. And we'll do one more. So start close to his beard and pull it towards and curve it around. All right, so I'm gonna rinse that off. And we're gonna go in and do a couple more 
Oh, there's too much water on my brush. We're gonna do a couple more of the little yellow blips. <laughs> I'm being very technical with my verbiage today. We'll go back into the brown, kind of brush it out. We're gonna do the same thing, just kind of start close to the beard and just pull it around about halfway around that loop. Pull it around and pull it around. Now we got two more left to go. All right, here's the last ones. Got a couple. This one is kind of going into his beard. So we'll fix that up a little. Get some good coverage there. I'll rinse that yellow. Oh, I didn't really mean to rinse that yellow, but it's okay. Going into the brown again, just barely. And we'll do those last little curves. And this one, just too much water in my brush. Curve around and around. Now while this is fairly wet still, I'm gonna add just a teeny bit of white to the opposite side of the brown. So I'm gonna get a little bit of white on my brush. And at the top, just very little. I'm making myself irritable. Let's try it again, a little bit of white. And you're gonna hit that very top of each of these little rounds. I'll show it to you close up in just a second. And then we're gonna highlight with a pen too. So there's our little bee skeep, bees kept, bee skip, bee skip, bee have. <laughs> so his beard is done. The beehive is done. I feel like I should add one more, but I think I'm gonna fix that with some white. Went a little crazy. Thank you, Charlotte. Isn't he beautiful? I'm gonna alter this a little. I got a little crazy here. And it went over the edge too, so. He fixed it. It's just paint, so it's always fixable. There we go. Okay, so I don't know if y'all know about our cute. Oh, I need to do one more quick, just quick, quick, quick layer of yellow on here. There are a couple of spots I see that are kind of translucent. And I like this fella so much. Normally I might just skip it, but I like him so much that I do want him to look nice. So we're gonna go in we're gonna fix him up so he looks really nice. Add a little bit more color to that yellow. Isn't he cute? Wait till we're done. Oh my goodness, wait to see the end. Again, thank you guys for spreading the love, sending out the love and letting your friends know we're here because that is why we're here. We just want to entertain the masses. <laughs> I almost said something else. And uh, we love it when we have a bunch of people. The more, the merrier. So I'm just adding a little bit more yellow just to make sure that's nice and covered. I am not gonna hang anything from the tip of his hat because we have some bees that are gonna be buzzing around. We may put a little black ball, I don't know yet. First thing I'm gonna do is grab my pen. 
So I use this often for those of you who are new here for the first time. If you are new here, thank you, Martha. If you are new to this page, can you pop me a heart and let me see who is new here and who is not? So if this is your first time watching or maybe even just your second, will you give me a heart and let me know? First timers. So this is a pen that you can get at Hobby Lobby. I see a heart, two, three hearts, four hearts. Welcome, you guys. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you hanging out with us for a little while on your Wednesday night. Look at that. Somebody's angry. <laughs> so this is a pen you can get at Hobby Lobby or you can get them online at Amazon. The brand, look at all those hearts. The brand is called Master's Touch, and it's a graphic 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is the size, okay? So it's a really thin, tiny, little black archival pen, and you want it to be archival so that <coughs> the resin doesn't make it run. Look at all the new folks. Thank you so, so much for being here. So I want to show you how we're really going to make this uh, gnome, all the details pop, okay? It could be a Steeler's gnome. So we're gonna make this pop by adding a few little details with our pen. Now, if you don't have a pen, you can totally use black paint and a teeny tiny, really small liner brush, like this, for instance, like this size liner brush. You want it to just have a few hairs on it so that it is um, going to create a really tiny little line, okay? So what we're going to do is, first I'm going to do his nose, and I do not do, I don't, I'm not going to outline him like he's a coloring book piece. I'm going to use short, light strokes just to give it a little bit of detail. So like for instance, that's wet, so I'm trying not to put my hand in it. On his nose, I'm gonna just stroke and stroke, and I might put a dot or two because I like that. So that's kind of what we're doing. There's his nose. Uh, the paint markers are pretty fat. The tip of those are really fat, and I don't know if you can see how tiny that is but that is the tiniest little marker, all right? So for his beard, I'm just gonna take my pen and make some lines, okay? Just to kind of give his beard some definition, especially where it ends, like on the tips. So just give it some wiggle lines and a little bit of definition. Maybe a few dots. <laughs> I like dots. And over here on our beast keep, we're gonna just kinda do the same thing. I'm just scoop, 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 scoop. So I'm gonna show you that close up and let you see how that looks. So you see the lines I made. It really brings out the detail in the little beehive, right? Okay, so now we're gonna go up here and I'm gonna do his hat too. And I'm even gonna do it where the black is because I'm gonna take it outside of the lines, okay? So I'm gonna go around his hat and I got my hand in wet paint again. And then here, we'll go around his hat. Here. One, two, three dots around his hat. Keep getting in wet paint. Around his hat. So, there is his details. I'm actually going to add some little cross hatches right there, so that is what, it does come in different colors. So that is kind of what his hat looks like, <laughs> right? It does make it inside the lines. So that is super cute. So the next thing we want, remember on our tracer, 
we had the bee coming out of um, the hive and leaving a little bee trail. So we're gonna add that and we're gonna add the uh, tentacles. Okay, so first tentacles. Let me see how this one is gonna do. Okay, this is the thicker pen. You could totally use this one, but I'm gonna use this thicker one. It is a graphic brush drawing pen. It's just a little bit thicker. And I'm gonna take and just give him some curves for his antenna. And I'm gonna take, I meant to get me a new little dauber, but I don't have one. I'm gonna take some black off my palette and I'm gonna use my stylus that I use to transfer. Thank you, Vicki Holloman. You're so sweet. And I'm gonna give him some little antenna balls <laughs> right on the ends of those lines that we just drew. Let me clean that off of there. And now I'm gonna use my skinny one again and we're gonna add that buzz line that's over here. But first, before we do that, I wanna figure out where my bee is gonna be. So he's gonna be flying away, like right there. So we want to make sure, I'm actually going to put one teeny, itsy, itsy, itsy tentacles, whatever. They're, what are they called? <laughs> uh, 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 you know what I mean, don't laugh. I'm gonna glue that down just so it doesn't wiggle while I'm doing everything else. <laughs> Where are they called? Antenna, not tentacles. <laughs> so while he is sitting there, I'm gonna decide how my line is gonna go. And I'm gonna use my little cute little pen to do it, but I'm gonna start him off with dots. And I'm gonna end him with dots. And then, we're gonna do the wiggle woggle. I gotta make sure my pen's working. So we're gonna go around and around and boom. So he's just buzzing around all over the place, okay? So let me fill that in just a little. My canvas is kind of blumpy. Okay, so we're gonna have a bee there. I actually bought, I actually brought three bees to the party. So I'm thinking we're gonna put one right here on the end of his hat. And we're gonna have one over here flying away too. What do you think? Is that not adorable? Let me move him so you can see him. He is so cute. I love him. Is that not so cute? So real quick, I'm gonna grab that glue again. And I'm gonna put just one baby drop, just to hold steady. And one baby drop, oh, poo. Just to hold steady. Ugh. And now we can resin, because that's all the glass I'm using. Now, if you were, if you're painting your bees and you wanted to add glass, you could totally add vitrograph to his antenna, or you could add him a glass beard, or you could do your um, beehive in gold glass. It would be totally adorable. But this is how we're gonna end this one. And I am ready to mix up some resin. So I'm gonna push him up. I'm gonna grab my little board that uh, he's gonna sit on. We'll go ahead and do that. I know he's so cute, isn't he? So we're gonna leave him here while I mix up some resin. Now I'm only gonna mix one half ounces of resin. That's a quarter ounce of hardener and a quarter ounce of resin. And I'm gonna use one cup, but I'm telling you, if you are uh, new to pouring and mixing resin, use two cups. Put your hardener in one cup, your resin in the other, and then combine them. That way you know for sure that the uh, mix is equal, okay? Because it's a 50-50 mix, okay? So I am going to put my gloves on. Just keep a watch out on Etsy, and you will find these uh, glass bees.
Thank you, uh, Catherine. Appreciate that. What'd she say? Oh my goodness. Ugh. Barbara says she don't even like gnomes, but he's cute. <laughs> so I'm gonna put my gloves on and we're gonna mix the teensy weensy weensy bit of resin. Now you could totally resin this without the bees if you have the glass bees. You could totally resin it without the glass bees on there and then just place them where you want after you resin. They'll be perfectly fine, but I'm gonna cover mine a little bit. So uh, I'm gonna mix it with, I'm gonna mix it in. So I want a quarter ounce. Uh, that half ounce is probably too much. I'm gonna go with it though because I have other things. Half ounce of resin, half ounce of hardener. I'm betting we can do it with half that much. Half, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pour. Oh. I'm gonna pour in very quiet, but very slowly. A quarter ounce, or a half ounce, no, a quarter ounce of hardener and a quarter ounce of resin. And then we're gonna mix it up. Whoop, don't get crazy. So I'm gonna grab my little plastic palette knife that I like to use when I'm doing small, in the small cup. I was gonna break off the resin because it's so thick on there. So watch what I can do. Because it's hardened on my palette knife, I can just peel it off because my palette knife is plastic. All right, so I'm ready to go. We're gonna mix this. We're gonna mix this for Three minutes, so Catherine is gonna time me. And while she times me, I am, I'm trying to hold my mouth right. While she times me, I'm gonna stir. You don't wanna stir real fast, you wanna do it slowly. And then while um, we're doing that, I can answer any questions you guys might have about my membership, about uh, my Wednesday lives, about resin, about art, anything you wanna ask me, I'm an open book. So just ask away and I'll try to answer your questions in these three minutes. Thank you, Amy. Is he not adorable? So cute. <laughs> so, so stinking cute. So I'm gonna just keep stirring. So anybody, if you're new here and you have a question, please don't be shy. Let us know if you have a question. I don't think so, Judy, because I thought I ended up with two packs. I bought two packs, or she gave me one. And um, oh, and they're all the same. Uh, uh, we use, Debbie, we use Art Resin. I'm gonna put that here for you. This, it's a two-part epoxy, and it is um, made in America. It is non-hazmat, no, non no BPAs, no VOCs, and it is made specifically for um, art pieces. So uh, the membership, uh, we are raising the price on the membership. Uh, we haven't settled on a price yet. Uh, it has been $37 for the last almost four years. So uh, we are raising the price because we have four years of workshops available. So I'm thinking it's gonna be 47, but it may just be 45. Somewhere in that price range is where it's gonna be. We haven't really, we're kind of trying to um, settle that right now. So there are almost two years worth of workshops available immediately when you join. And then there are, um, two more years of workshops in the vault, which you get at six months. Tell us a little bit about my background. Thank you for asking that. I have been an artist most of my life. I have been drawing and painting as long as I can remember. Um, I started painting as a young person, and I really thought 
uh, I was going to um, draw and paint for a living when I was younger, and then I got a reality check, and everybody would tell me, you, you're not going to make a living doing that, and I ended up going to college uh, and taking accounting, and I took an accounting job, and then I quit, and in... 1996, uh, roll tab, 1996, I quit that job and I started doing art full-time for a living. Thank you, Catherine, for letting me know. I started doing art full-time for a living and I make a good income. So don't let anybody tell you any different. So our, you know, our parents and people, teachers, you know, grown-ups all told us that when we were young, that you, you know, what you can and can't make a living doing, and they didn't know it was going to be 2022, and you could do that for a living. So, um, but I've been doing art, resin art, for, I started out as a faux finisher, and I've been doing resin art since 2010, but I have been working with resin since 2006. So, that's a little bit of something, something, and one day when we have more time, maybe we'll just have a chat talk and we can discuss that and I can find out about all you guys too. So yeah, I could have totally used half of what I made. So if you're making these and you're doing them on a five by seven, you um, can totally do it using one quarter ounce total, which would be an eighth ounce of hardener and an eighth of ounce of resin. Yes. So yes, high five for sure. Even when I quit my full-time job, because I was making decent money, I quit my full-time job. I was working for Fred's Dollar Stores. I was the accounts payable, vice president of her accounts payable. Um, I, everybody still told me, you're not going to be able to make a living making art. You're not going to be able to make a living as a faux finisher. Nobody's going to pay you to do that. And they were wrong because I did it right up until 2011 or 2012, I guess. And I made darn good money doing it. Now I just teach online and I still make darn good money doing it and selling my art is definitely bumps up that income level. So don't be afraid to sell your art and don't be afraid to ask what you're worth. That's something else we teach inside the Shattered Circle is how to price your art so that you are getting what you are worth. All right, so that is good. And I know I missed some questions, so I will come back and answer them if I can. I think my girls who are here are doing a really good job of answering questions that I'm missing. So thank you, ladies. I'm trying to salvage these gloves so I can use them again tomorrow. I like to use them as often as I can if I'm not uh, saturating them. So now what I'm gonna do is take my heat gun Whoops, hang on. I'm gonna take my little heat gun that I bought from Amazon and I am going to pop any bubbles that we created into our resin. When, we, when you mix two things together, you're incorporating air into your resin. So you wanna pop those bubbles that that air created. <laughs> So this little heat gun from Amazon does that perfectly. And you can wait 15 minutes or so. And yeah, I should have done that too, but I didn't. I don't want to waste them on that. <laughs> I don't like wasting my wipes. Um, so you can see that I've popped all those bubbles. You can come back in about 15 minutes and do it again. So check out our cute I'm trying to hold it still for a second so I can make sure I have it where you can see it. Our cute little bumblebee gnome. I love him so much. He is so stinking cute. 